Well, I'm such a dumbass for doing this two months later, but hey, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Prince of Strong Style, and somewhat, this is the sixth episode of my weekly Q&As. I stopped doing them about two months ago because I was just burned out, I was tired, and I was just way too lazy to even bother doing this episode. But I decided I might as well do this one, and the reason why I didn't do these weekly Q&As anymore was because of two things. Number one, as previously mentioned, I was just burned out and I just didn't really have the energy to do it. But number two was that I didn't get that many questions. I only got one from the last episode, from episode five. And, um, yeah, and I feel like although it may not be necessary to do this, I wanted to try it out again to see how this can work. Again, this is not a weekly thing. I want to try to keep this as a consistent thing. But I might as well answer the question that I got. And that question was from Jerichoholic8704. And to you, man, I'm really sorry that I didn't get to answer this question back a couple of months ago. But I hope to make it up to you by answering it right now. Uh, thankfully, I got a bit of time, so let's get into it. So your question was the top five most underrated matches of the mid-year of 2017. So earlier, uh, I believe it was over the summer, I did say to you guys to send in questions for the mid-year edition of my weekly Q&A. You know, sending questions about pro wrestling that was about pro wrestling in between January 1st, 2017 until June 30th, 2017. And the question he got me was the top five hidden gems of 2017 thus far. For me, it was a bit of a difficult one because I do follow a good amount of wrestling, but I mainly have kept it to just New Japan right now, considering just the poor quality of the of WWE right now, which I'm not going to bother going into. But I do have five matches that I think are the biggest hidden gems of the year. And my number five choice, I could have put this at number one, but for the most part, from what I hear from people, they've actually really enjoyed this match, saying that it's one of the better matches WWE has had this year. And that number five goes to Triple H versus Seth Rollins in the unsanctioned match from WrestleMania 33. For me personally, this was the best match of that show. Yes, granted, that show wasn't all that great or anything, in my opinion. I thought it was a really good show. But by far, for me personally, this was the match of the night. This just had great storytelling, psychology, work on the knee, and definitely Triple H did a great job of putting over Rollins uh, in that match. It was really, really good. I would actually say really great, actually. Um... Is it a match of the year contender? Not really, but it definitely is a is a great matchup that really focuses more on storytelling and psychology than it does on these huge insane spots. But the finish also was awesome, and uh, yeah, I would recommend it for those who really um, uh, really didn't think that it was that great of a match, but I think it actually was. So check it out. At number four, I got Bobby Fish versus Jay Lethal from Ring of Honor's 15th anniversary show. Many people would say that the match of the night from that show was the three-way uh, Las Vegas street fight for the ROH tag titles. Um, but this one was arguably the best match of that show. Ring of Honor this year has just not really garnered my attention. Yes, Super Card of Honor and the 15th anniversary show caught my attention. But um, honestly, I think one of the highlights of the not only this year, but mainly that show, was Bobby Fish versus Jay Lethal. And I believe this was a number one contenders match for the... I believe it was for the ROH World title, but wow, this was a great match. Um, I've always said that Bobby Fish is an extremely, extremely underrated wrestler. And with his recent uh, debut in NXT alongside Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole, I cannot wait to see what he can bring to um, at, into the tag division of NXT. I think he's an extremely underrated performer. And we all know that Jay Lethal is really damn good to great. But um, yeah, this was probably the best singles match I've seen. Both guys have in recent memory, and it's debatable. It's an awesome wrestling match. Solid psychology and storytelling. Really exciting. The crowd was really into it. Great match. Extremely underrated. And number three, this one's actually my favorite of the entire list. It's such a great match. I have no clue why nobody, in regards to skill, gives one of these talents at least some recognition. I mean, he's such a good performer. He's not... At the level of guys like Kota Ibushi, but in regards to the junior heavyweight division, he's one of the be one of the better performers out there. And that is from New Japan Pro Wrestling's 45th anniversary show, 
uh, we got Hiromu Takahashi versus the highly underrated Ryusuke Taguchi for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. This was a freaking awesome match. I love this match. Uh, it's one of the most underrated matches, I think, arguably in the last decade. I honestly don't understand why not a lot of people give this match credit. It's such a great match. And this was followed by Tiger Max W versus Kazuchika Okada in the main event, which was an awesome match as well. But this one for me was my favorite match of the show. It was such a great match. Great psychology and storytelling by Taguchi on Takahashi's leg. Just great, great match. I think it's extremely uh, underappreciated by a lot of people. It really is. Check it out if you haven't seen anything from either of these guys. This is a great place to start. At number two, I'm sticking with uh, Japan, but it's not New Japan, but it's from Pro Wrestling Noah. And funny enough, I wanted to watch more Pro Wrestling Noah, and I didn't, but I might as well try to do so, considering Katsuhiko Nakajima dropped the GHC title to Eddie Edwards, which congratulations to him, but I'm not going to bother going into it right now. But on the same show that Nakajima defended the GHC title against Takashi Segura, was what I thought was probably my favorite match of the night, and that was uh, Naomichi Marafuji and Atushi Aoki versus Maybach Tanaguchi and Go Shizaki from Pro Wrestling Noah's the first an sorry the first navigation day one. This was an awesome 30 minute tag match, which was entertaining, exciting. It was paced really well. Um, Shizaki and uh, no. No, Atushi, Atushi Kotoji, I'm sorry. I meant to say Atushi Kotoji and Atushi Aoki. I apologize for the mix-up. But it was uh, Aoki, uh, Kotoji, and Shizaki. They freaking tore it up in that match, especially the final, like, 10 minutes. They just beat the hell out of each other. They honestly stole the show. Um, they just brutalized each other. They were bleeding. It was such an awesome match. And I have to give it up to Tanaguchi and Marufuji as well for their performances. They really pulled off a really great... 30-minute tag match. It's extremely underrated. Doesn't get as much credit, but not as much as my number one choice. On the same day that this match was released on television was the same day as New Japan for Wrestling's Wrestle Kingdom 11. And we all know about, <clears throat> excuse me, we all know about Okada Omega 1 and how phenomenal that match was. We all know about the other matches like uh, Takahashi versus Kushida, Goto versus Shibata, and Naito and Tanahashi, but one match that doesn't get as much uh, credit as other matches that took place on, on that day was, of course, DIY of Johnny Gargano and uh, Tommaso Ciampa versus TM61 for the NXT Tag Titles from NXT Television January 4, 2017. This match was great. I honestly thought it was a great match. Yes, it it, it doesn't go... It doesn't um, hold up against some of DIY's other matches, but... Honestly, this just doesn't get as much credit, and this actually took place in Melbourne, Australia, and it was taped back in December after they did their show in Osaka, which does feature another great DIY tag team title match against Tajiri and uh, Kira Tozawa, but this one honestly was just great as well. I think it was extremely entertaining, really well paced, it features a few awesome spots, the crowd was really into it, I don't know why this match doesn't get as much credit. And obviously TM61, I believe they're gone from NXT right now, going back to Japan. And uh, I always thought that they were a really good tag team. It's just that they never really got those opportunities to really shine. But if you ask me what was the shining, um, the bright spot of their entire run in NXT, I would go to this matchup right here. It was a great match as a whole. Uh, it probably doesn't hold up as much as like DIY's other matches, but for me personally, I thought this was a really damn good match. And it... It's the least talked about gem of the year, in my opinion. So uh, there you have it, my top five most underrated hidden gems of 2017 thus far. I know there's probably going to be a lot more till the end of the year. But um, yeah, guys, uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, my response to that question. And send in your questions if you want me to answer them. I'm not going to do it like a weekly thing. But if you guys want to send me questions for me to answer, put the, uh, write them down in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you want more. If you want to see more of me, go to my uh, go to my Twitter, which the link is going to be in the description below, along with my Ask.fm page. And until the next episode comes, guys, peace.